Hi everyone, welcome back to a very long overdue greenhouse video. I also want to thank all of my Patreon subscribers for helping to contribute to this project. Our primary sponsors, which I would appreciate that you pay them a visit, is greenlifeplanet.net, glassbottleoutlet.com, and trueaquaponics.com. They really stepped up to the plate and are our top contributors and we really do appreciate their support. Before you ever go into a fairly large project, it's a good idea to have some type of a business plan. And I basically had written one up so that I could apply for a grant to get some reimbursement for this. I still haven't heard about the grant yet, uh, but I'm going to go over that today and uh, just sort of show everybody uh, what's involved with that. And it's a really, really good idea to get your thoughts down on paper and go through the numbers and make sure what you're going to do is actually going to make some money. I have a lot of people come through here that uh, basically just want to come and say, oh, I'm going to set up a, a huge aquaponic setup and start selling produce. Well, if you don't have a plan on how much that's going to cost you, who you're going to be selling it to, who your competition is, all that stuff, you're really just asking for failure on that type of a project. And that really pertains to any type of a business. So we're going to go over that plan. Also, I'm going to go over what we have done so far with some soil testing that we've done and a few other little minor things um, at the end of this video. So hopefully you can not fall asleep, go grab a cup of coffee, and uh, follow along. This particular grant was available through the Connecticut Department of Agriculture where it's a reinvestment grant where they're trying to take some of our tax dollars and reinvest it into various farms throughout the state. And a reinvestment grant works by you having to spend all your money up front and then uh, after the completion of the project which has to be done within a year they will uh, reimburse you with up to 50 percent of what you expended with a maximum of forty thousand dollars. So this particular project actually uh, worked out really well with fitting within their criteria. Um, it is a competitive grant, so I am competing against a whole bunch of other farmers within the state. So I don't even know how many have applied to it or, or anything. The uh, biggest catch that I'll probably get is that uh, technically you're not supposed to start any of the project. And... Uh, sort of puts you into a catch-22 because you have to sort of get things started with some of the site work and whatnot to know how much you need to spend on the on the entire grant. So hopefully they take that into account and, and understand that. With this grant application they do provide you what is required to uh, submit and of course you need a cover sheet to make it look pretty, a uh, general introduction of what you're up to along with a product summary and they obviously like to keep it short and sweet, which I also appreciate because I'm not a very wordy person when it comes to writing. Missions and strategies of what you're going to do to meet your goals. They also want to know what the present status of the project is, so I guess they do realize that you may have to get some of it started just so you can apply for the grant. They want to know a product description if you are going to be producing any products and a brief profile of the target markets. Obviously they want to know if they're going to invest in you, who you're going to be selling it to, and any marketing strategies and sales plans. So again, they want to make sure that you do have a plan on how you're going to sell your, your product. They also want to know operational plans, um, how you're going to distribute your products, and how you're going to operate your business. Again, this is all very good to make sure you're covering all your financial aspects of running your business. And they also want to know your financial position and projections. Um, basically, to be eligible for this grant, they want to make sure that you were a real business and not just some homeowner trying to get a whole bunch of money out of the state. And whatever funding requirements that you're going to need how you're going to implement this. Um, this is obviously going to be a large part of it on how the whole construction process goes along. And a nice little conclusion. Basically you want to boast yourself to show why you should get any money out of the state. So you have to make it sound pretty good to convince them. 
Now all of this that I'm going to be uh, showing you is going to be on my website so you can download that from there. So here's the cover page of the grant application. Of course I had to throw a nice little picture of the dome and the fall foliage to make it look nice and pretty and eye grabbing. And of course I want to know who you are. So here's the introduction basically give a little bit of history about the farm when it was purchased. Um, and then I wanted to go into uh, how long I've been working with aquaponics because you want to basically be able to prove that you do have a track record and you're not just going blindly into something and don't have a clue about what you're doing. So there's a history about uh, when I started and then um, when I expanded into the uh, geodesic uh, greenhouse and uh, basically you tout that uh, you have different groups here, you're doing some training and uh, of course I have to promote the YouTube video and show the uh, state that we have lots of subscribers and lots of views so a lot of people are following this whole project. And then I also uh, did a little plug uh, for the grow grips basically as we we're doing the development work with the aquaponics we developed the grow grip and now have a product that does uh, generate revenue for the farm. So here's the uh, project summary. Basically we're stating that we're going to build a 26 by 144 foot greenhouse and it has a annual maximum capacity of producing around 65,000 heads of lettuce per year. And I have some spreadsheets uh, that will come up a little bit later uh, showing these numbers. And of course they want to see a mission statement. Again, I'm not too wordy with my stuff, so I'm straight into the point where we basically want to be able to produce um, some healthy food and do a little bit of training. And so here is the present status of the project. They did want to see that. So we explained that I did purchase the uh, Gothic Arch Hoop Greenhouse and finishing up some of the design work and trying to get ready for the summer to get things going. For the product description, we state that we're mostly going to grow some leafy greens in here and along with some herbs and strawberries and tomatoes and whatnot. But the primary uh, cash revenue will be from the leafy greens. and. I don't know if they like them or not, but I like throwing pictures in. It's always a nice distraction. So threw in some pictures of the lettuce that we grow here and also some of the Amish paste heirloom tomatoes. I was really pushing that we're going to be trying to grow heirloom varieties and trying to keep it as natural as possible. I don't state that we're going to be organic or naturally grown, but basically it's implied that we're going to try to keep it as organic as possible. For our target markets, we're going to target the local restaurant owners. We basically, any of the restaurants that are around here are buying their produce from California or Florida or wherever it's grown. And so we really want to push the locally grown aspect, especially um, since it's going to be grown here within the state of Connecticut. If you can keep that produce not having to truck it all over the country, um, that's a, a good sign for winning a grant like this. Some of the marketing strategies, I basically don't have a whole lot. Basically, we do a little bit of door-to-door -door work. We've already brought some of our lettuce to various restaurants in the area, and they are already on board to start buying. So essentially, we already have uh, some customers that are willing to start purchasing as soon as we can get into larger production runs. And of course, we talk about the grow grips once again, uh, just to make sure that they do understand that while this project is going, um, there is the revenue still being generated from the grow grips. For the operational plans, it's designed to be a part-time greenhouse. This is not a full-time job. And the calculations show that for a greenhouse's size, it's really about 15 hours a week uh, just to operate something this size. And most of the labor is dealt with uh, having to uh, plant and harvest the produce. I mean, that's the, the main product that we're producing, so that's obviously where all the labor is going to go into. And I did want to state that this greenhouse does work without a whole lot of human interaction. With the uh, development work of that inline mineralization tank that I put in and the automatic fish feeders, the current greenhouse, I really only go down there real quickly once a day, but 
the most of the maintenance is done um, over the weekends. So the system is sort of self-operational. So for a 15 hour per week uh, greenhouse, I think it's realistic to do this. And of course they want to know all of my financial positions and sorry I'm not going to share uh, some of these numbers with you because it is uh, some of my personal information. Uh, we do state what the operating income was uh, for last year uh, just so that they know that we can uh, sustain this business and we do state where it comes from um, from you know YouTube videos with the ads from those uh, our sale of expanded shale and of course the uh, grow grip products and they also want to know uh, basically what we did report to the government for our income and expenses so you do state that in here and also I threw in it was not asked for but I wanted to show what the uh, operating uh, expense income and expenses were for 2015 uh, mainly because with the grow grip sales really ramping up uh, this past year I did want to show that um, we did a lot more revenue this past year than we did in uh, 2014 so 2015 was a much better year for us and also we do state what we are projecting for the revenue that will be generated by uh, this greenhouse um, ninety one thousand dollars sounds like a huge amount of money but then when you uh, start tacking on some of the expenses uh, it really digs into that so once you throw in the expenses for the year of sixty one thousand dollars it really draws down uh, the actual profit uh, so it's uh, looking really really slim for being able to pull a profit and you don't want to make a lot of mistakes so make sure when you're coming up with your numbers that they are very accurate because it doesn't take much to all of a sudden just start throwing yourself to be running at a loss so this greenhouse I look at it as a break-even uh, venture right now Along with the projected annual revenue, I did run some numbers by adding uh, some artificial lighting into the greenhouse. Essentially right now we don't grow much over the winter. It does grow but it sort of is in a dormant state. We harvest a little bit um, once a week or so. And it does uh, increase the uh, income and expenses a bit but also increases the, the net profit by running the artificial lighting. However, at this point in time, um, I don't want to install any artificial lights. I just can't afford to uh, come up with the extra money to uh, install these. And I really just want to get the system up and running and established. And then in a year or so, I'll probably put some uh, lights into the greenhouse to really keep things going uh, all year long. So as in the last video, I did explain that I'm going to try to do this in different phases. Phase one which is what I'm applying for the grant. We're estimating uh, total expenses of $77,000 and I do provide a uh, worksheet in with this grant to uh, show that, um, that we did work through the numbers properly. And also it wasn't asked for but I like to do a three-year uh, cash flow plan because obviously the first year while you're getting the greenhouse up and running you're obviously going to be running at a loss because I'm going to be paying for a loan and other expenses. So once you get things up and running, it's nice to see how much um, you're going to be making or losing over a three-year plan. Uh, some places will actually go out five or ten years, but I thought three years was a realistic number for me. They also want to know how you're going to be funding this. Um, we're basically going to do it with our own cash and I do have a small line of credit with our local bank uh, just to deal with some of the quick uh, bumps in the road that we have if we run into cash flow problems and we're also working with uh, getting another additional line of credit with another bank and I did want to state that we do have farmer tax exemption so anything that we do purchase thankfully we don't have to pay sales tax within the state of Connecticut and here's the implementation for the project Basically, as I said, we're going to be doing phase one, which is just the greenhouse all by itself. It doesn't have any other buildings and whatnot. Um, my real goal is to get this greenhouse up and running and start generating revenue um, so that we're not running at a huge loss. And then from there, we'll work on heading up phase two, which is a few years out, where we want to construct a barn and office space, deals with the septic and the well and uh, some product storage for our grow grips, expanded shale, and what other other products that we're coming out with. 
And then uh, phase three would be uh, construction of two additional greenhouses and final parking and whatnot. So once uh, these other two greenhouses are uh, fully erected, um, it becomes a full-time uh, job and probably employs one other person. So with the phase one, here is the basically timeline of what they were looking for on how to get the entire project done. So for the winter of 2015-16, which we're currently in now, dealing with the pr preliminary site plan, getting some permits, and making sure we can actually build this. And in the spring, we'll finalize the septic design and site layout and get the site work ready and get it all graded once uh, our frost is gone. Of course, this will really be dictated if we win the grant or not. If we don't win the grant, we can basically start whenever we want. If we do win this grant, we do have to wait for all the paperwork to work its way through the red tape within the state. Then during the summer and the fall, we'll regrade uh, the topsoil, stabilize the area, uh, erect the greenhouse with its covering, build the end walls, do all the electrical and heating and cooling. And then during the winter, we'll actually build the aquaponic system. This can be done while it's snowing out because then I can get the heating and um, just build while the weather is bad indoors. And then in the spring and summer of 2017, make sure the system is up and running and fine tune everything. And so that will get us within a year. So hopefully that uh, meets what the grant requirements are for having the project done within a year. We'll really be scrambling to get a lot of this done and have it done in a year, especially since it's basically me and, and a helper every once in a while uh, getting some of this done. If we don't win the grant, I can take my sweet time and take a few years to get it done if I really needed to. I did provide the um, site plan, which I showed in the previous video of how we want it to all look. So if you want a quick explanation of this, you can go back and look at the first video in the series. And then um, an overview of how the whole uh, system works. And I'm going to go over this another time. I'm just going to breeze over that real quickly. And then a conclusion. Basically, as I said earlier, you sort of want to tout yourself uh, that this is a proven technology. Other people are doing it. And that we can help out the state of Connecticut by uh, putting an aquaponic system in uh, right here in Connecticut. And so we talk about uh, how most of the lettuce is produced in uh, California and Arizona, so it's being trucked across the U.S., and how aquaponics is a great uh, economical method for growing uh, fish and uh, produce at the same time, and you're basically uh, sharing that water between the two systems. And then we also uh, show some other uh, greenhouses that are uh, successfully uh, running. So um, with permission, I did get um, permission from uh, Ryan Chatterson from Chatterson Farms and Austin Aquaponics and also um, Fluid Farms in uh, Portland, Maine. So I do appreciate them letting me uh, take some uh, pictures of uh, their setups and applying it with the grant. So we do show how large of a setup that is so it's comparable against uh, what we're going to be putting up and what they may be expanding to. Um, also, we do reference a few things on about aquaponics or so. If they do need to cross-reference something, make sure that I'm not just laying out a line of BS for this uh, project. And then here's uh, Ryan Chatterson's uh, greenhouse. So he has a very impressive setup. So if you ever see um, his greenhouse, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And you know, join him on Facebook and show him some support. Part of the grant application is they obviously want to see what you're going to spend all your money on. You can't just go and ask for $35,000 and say, well, you have to trust me on what I'm going to buy. They want to see what you are going to buy to prove out that this project will uh, pay for itself with the state. So obviously we've already purchased the greenhouse, so $5,200 there. We can't get reimbursed on that because this is uh, pre-grant days. But the rest of the expenses that we're going to need to finish up rebuilding the greenhouse, we can apply for that. So any of the expenses that are in here, we take that number and have it between what we're going to pay and what the state will pay for. And we're going to need all types of stuff, some foam around the edges, obviously some type of a covering, whether it's going to be a twin wall film, we're thinking about doing some solar wrap or something like that. So we'll see what happens with the uh, expenses on the greenhouse. And then I also broke out what we're going to spend on the aquaponics system, the Duraskrim and the uh, grow bed framework and um, whatnot. It's going to be a 
a large expense with that. So our material costs come to be about uh, $27,000. Equipment is broken up a little bit separately. Basically, equipment is something that you just buy, you don't build it. So, um, you know, we have the blower kits for the uh, twin film for the greenhouse and uh, propane heaters, some fans, and uh, some general lighting. And obviously the uh, tanks for the aquaponics system, filtration, the air blowers, some Dutch buckets possibly, and the backup generators and UPS to, to keep things going. I also have some uh, contracts and consultant work that needs to be in here. We're going to need electrical service brought in from the street. We're not going to run solar. Um, and then, of course, the site work. That's a huge expense. The quote came in just to have the site leveled uh, at around $8,000. Just a tremendous amount of work to get all this dirt and rock uh, leveled out. We're not as lucky as uh, some people are in uh, some areas of the country where they live on level ground. Uh, we're going to have to have a, pl a plumber come in to install the propane tank and also our uh, site testing for test holes and uh, perk tests. Again, another expense we've already had to incur, uh, so the state won't reimburse that. And we've debated doing a geothermal system. That's another $8,000 to do that. Uh, chances are very high we will not be uh, doing geothermal and I'll explain that um, at some other point in time. So with the uh, materials, um, oops, it's actually mistaken here, it should say uh, contracts and uh, materials, but uh, $23,000 uh, just for uh, dealing with some of this. So the total cost of the project is uh, $73,000. So it's sort of important for us to be able to win this grant. I'm also providing this spreadsheet. It was essentially a worksheet to make sure that my numbers came out okay, where we show how many plants that this greenhouse can produce. So my design setup shows that it will hold 315 rafts, and these are um, basically a high density, a 32 hole raft. And it doesn't take much um, with changing these numbers. You know, if you go to a, a 26 hole raft, you know, we go from a revenue of $91,000 to, um, let's say, a 24-hole raft to $69,000, or you know, some people do a 16-hole raft. It gets you down to 47. So it, playing with the numbers, it changes things very, very quickly. I've also been doing some experiments in our current greenhouse with doing a high-density growing and then uh, partway through the growing cycle uh, move the plants to wider space rafts just to increase the space uh, a little bit more and that does play with the numbers uh, of course it adds more labor into the system but overall it's almost a wash to make a little bit more money uh, by having the labor but for now we're just going to show you plant it in the raft and away you go so our capacity with lettuce is uh, 10,000 plants at any point in time and we really stretch the growth cycle out for an averaging of 10 weeks. Um, during the summer, I can grow out in uh, seven to eight weeks. During the winter, it's a lot longer. So I wanted to be very conservative with the numbers and show a 10-week uh, growing cycle. So that comes to be uh, 52,000 plants per year. And you can see just by changing this down uh, to eight weeks, it increases uh, the plant growth. So if we're doing lighting, we could do that. And you, know, you can see the revenue here jumps way up. So again, be very careful with the numbers. It does not take much to uh, swing them in a very ugly direction. Based off of how many plants per day the system can produce, you know, just a quick fun calculation, that's five and a half rafts that we would pull out of the system each day. I would plan on harvesting a, a few times a week instead just to bulk things up a little bit more. Put in a dollar seventy-five per head of lettuce. It's probably a little high. I definitely plan on much lower than that, maybe a dollar and a quarter, maybe even a buck. You can see it swings the revenue way down. So every little bit makes a big difference in here. Um, it's always a good idea to plan for some crop loss, you're going to get bugs and disease or whatever, so you're going to be pulling stuff out, stuff that just doesn't grow right. I also threw in about 40 Dutch buckets. I think I got enough space in here to uh, run some tomatoes down the center aisle. We'll see how it all fits once it gets in here, but I just put in very light revenue for that. It's basically insignificant. 
and maybe a little bit of fish sails in here too. I'm really designing it off of plants and, and not the fish. So you look at this and you're saying, oh, this is great, $91,000 in revenue. But you start hitting the expenses. And um, what I did was I put the uh, building in here under a five-year loan. So every month based off of a five-year loan off of 55 something thousand dollars for the base of the project. Um, that's not with the grant. We're needing $1,100 just to pay off the loan. Um, but if we're not paying a loan, um, it definitely would help the bottom line by not having to throw $14,000 a year at a bank. General building maintenance is a good idea um, just to make sure that you're covering miscellaneous expenses for the building, some property taxes to deal with, um, general electricity. I do have a blank in here uh, for extra lighting where I have another tab in the spreadsheet to uh, put in uh, how many lights we're going to have in here and just by doing that it figures out how many watts we're going to be consuming and uh, how much we would be spending a year on electricity. Uh, heating is another huge expense. I'm going to try to run this system as cold as possible but we're looking at roughly $12,000 a year in propane uh, just to, to keep the greenhouse above freezing. Miscellaneous supplies, buying fish every year, um, based off my calculations we'll of course need $3,600 in fish feed, some miscellaneous expenses and I also threw in payroll just to make sure that we're covering all expenses if I did have to hire somebody to uh, move product around. So our expenses came out to be $61,000 and take your income and expenses and there's your uh, overall profit. And uh, I can't say it enough. Um, really have to be careful with the numbers because it does not take much to make this uh, $29,000 in profit really quickly come to be a loss. now you can wake up and we'll go over what I've gotten done so far since the last video. I've taken advantage of our mild winter and started cutting down some of the trees that are between the front field where the new greenhouse is going to be and where the current greenhouse is. There's probably a dozen or so trees that are in here and they're now going to become firewood. One of the bigger advancements in the project is getting the soil testing done. Um, this is needed so we can put a septic system in and figure out what's down below the grade. Unfortunately, the ground had already frozen, so we have about six inches of frost to, to dig through. And the stuff is like concrete, so my excavator driver had a tough time getting through it. But once he picked through it, once you get into the lower areas, you can dig in it normally. Even though we're not going to put the septic system in right away, I did want to make sure that we had a spot that was suitable for this for when we do build a barn in the future. So with this, we have an engineer that is designing the septic system and a sanitarian out uh, helping with the measurements to make sure that the, the ground is suitable. So they go through and look at different elevations of the soil, make sure it's uh, perkable, which means that the water can soak down into the soil and to make sure there's no ledge or ground rock and uh, there isn't a high water table. We did find water uh, down at about six feet. It won't have any bearing on the septic system. Perk test is very simple. Just dig a hole, fill it with water, and measure how fast it takes it to drain. This one came in at about 13 minutes to the inch. If you want to burn money real quick, a great way to do it is to hire an engineer, a sanitary, and a heavy equipment operator to stand around a hole for a few hours. And when the engineer and the sanitarian are all done looking at the hole, you just fill it back in and make the whole thing disappear.
my daughter got a neat little drone, so I figured I'd take it out for a flight. I haven't quite mastered it, but you get a little bit of overview of what's happening in the front field. It's going to take a little more practice to uh, really master how this thing works. All right, you're still with us. I appreciate you watching through this whole thing. And once again, it would be great if you could help support our project by joining Patreon. And next time around, I'm not really sure what we're gonna be doing. It's still gonna be winter within the next month or so, so the ground's gonna be frozen, so we can't start any construction yet. Um, but most likely, we'll probably cover some of the permitting process that we have to deal with, and maybe some more of the planning. So that's about it for now. Once again, thanks for watching.